In the summer of 1999, upon the return of the Hawaiian voyaging canoe Makali from her epic Amau voyage to Micronesia, a group of young Hawaiian students from around the state gathered on the big island of Hawaii. These students, part of the Napua Noeau Native Hawaiian Cultural Program, had come to share with the crew of Makali the crew's knowledge of non-instrument navigation, traditional canoe voyaging, and the adventures the crew experienced while sailing Grand Master Navigator, Dr. Pius Mao Pialu, home to his native island on Sadawal in Western Micronesia. Share now with those students the sights and sounds of that first Makali summer.
Sinä huolella lajia.
Makali Kapuna, Andy Marie Solomon, shares her knowledge of the navigational heiau, Koe Heiau Hola Moana, with the students. <laughs> Kupuna Nui brought him here and he lived here in the back with the kahunas learning all about uh, seafaring, all about the currents, about the stars, and everything there is to learn about navigation. And this is where he came to learn until he was a young man. Then his kahuna said, I'll take you out. And they went as far as they could. And when they could not see land, then the kahuna left him outside and said, bring the canoe back <coughs> where I am. But he got twisted around and he landed over Kaho'olawe instead. Because he, the, the thing he said was the wind. Too many winds that he got twisted around. But over here is where all the navigators of Hawaii brought their ali'i nui. Whenever the king wanted to go, either deep sea fishing or Tahiti or wherever, this is where they had to come first. They had to first go to Kanaloa. And the reason why he's by himself is because these are only elements. And he is the one that belongs to the sea. So the Ali'i Nui, or the king and his navigator, would bring the offer and offer it to Kanaloa for permission to go onto the sea. And the reason why Kanaloa can come up 
because they claim that he has the form of a squid to octopus and they do go on land but not very far so this is where they came and all the people around here would have to take care of the Ali'i and his bunch of people and the navigator they would have to feed them because the king could not live any own, own time he wants. He has to wait until these kahunas have to do all the prayers. And with the Ali'i Nui, they have to respect each different uh, gods, the gods of the universe, I guess we call them. And they all have to have Ava. And so, each one had to be prayed. So it took a lot of time, more than a month or so. And at the same time, the Kahuna is asking for sign to go on sea. And all these things, these people have to feed until they're ready to sail, then they go. We brought Mao up here. He comes up here and I know all the time. And when Mao sat over there, he said that those big kohakus, a lot of them were brought wherever the uh, navigators on Ali'i, whatever land they came from, they bring their own stone and they put up there. Now, when we went to the Marianas, uh, Mao's son came up here and he chose a stone and they took it back. And we put it back to his Ali Inui that's buried in Saipan someplace. So that's how the old people used to do. <coughs> and there's an old story in my family, the Paliku tale. They said after this navigator took his Ali, who was going to Tahiti, and as they left this place, uh, I don't know how many weeks and months they were on the ocean, but then a great big storm came up, and there was no stars in the sky for days and days. So the navigator, Paliku, was lost, but he kept praying and praying to Kaneholani, God of the sky, to show him, show him the way, because he didn't dare tell anybody he didn't know where he was going. And how many days he prayed, finally, in the distance, he saw a cloud. And the cloud was in the shape of Tahiti. So he turned his canoe around and headed straight for that cloud. And he <coughs> did reach Tahiti. Now, when Mao and them came up here with the crew of the Hokulea, they were talking. And then Mao explained, and I was listening, that that's how he can tell when land was close by, because the cloud does not move. If he wake up in the morning and he see the same cloud in the horizon, the same shape, he watch that cloud. And if for three, four days he keep watching that cloud, it's still there, he know it. And I said to myself, oh, that's my family's story. But then as the years went by and as storyteller after storyteller talked, then it changed to the shape of Tahiti. But I was amazed that Mao had said that. And that's what happened to my ancestor. He must have watched that cloud. And all these things are so important to you, to all of us island people, because we are all come from ship. We come from the canoe from the very beginning. And later on, ships came. And we are all mingled with the blood of all different people that came on our island. That's why the ocean is so important to our race. You have any questions so far? I keep telling, telling and no question. Oh my God. And uh, you know, when this little girl 
that whoever is around here where the navigator had to, couldn't be a navigator, he had to go back and plant sweet potato, where he lived around the bend, about a mile from here, Puepa. Now every time he would uh, be sitting on the edge like this of the sea and gazing out and that little girl would climb on his lap and he would tell her the stories of the navigation and of his days at school. And he would say, you know, he feel real bad because he was the last one. And there's no more navigators in our ohana, the Kaliku. So the little girl said, why? Oh, I have only girls left. So they cannot be navigators. And that little girl again asked, why? <laughs> and he said, uh, because the gods would not accept the offering of the Ava from a woman. And again she said, why, why not? And he said, because the gods were Haumia to blood, detested blood, any kind of blood. So no blood was allowed over here. And the navigation, <coughs> because she could not offer to come here and pray to all these different gods. You know, when my grandmother always talk about gods, one day I told her, oh, grandma, the gods are false. I said, we have only Akua. We believe in God. She said, yes. She said, I love God too, but I respect the gods of my people because they taught our people respect, respect for the Aina, respect for the ohana, respect for oneself. That's why the land is still beautiful, she said, because that's what the gods of our people taught us. Taught us malamaka aina. It is not yours. It's for you to use and take care, but it does not belong to you. And she also said, it does not belong to only you. So one day, I was with her down the beach. My sisters and my brother, cousins, we were so happy that we were going down to the beach because she said, tomorrow morning, we're all going kahakai. But then we saw my grandfather getting a long pole with a hook. And we was wondering what he was going to do. But anyway, we were happy. We, that morning, we got up early and we rushed down to the beach with our ohana and our, our kupuna. But the sea was rough, was boiling. Oh, we were so disappointed. But you know, underneath was such a turmoil. And our kupuna said, wait, Kanaloa is going to give us a gift. So we waited. Then all of a sudden, up on the pali, Kohala, Makapala, where we live, is steep. And that's why he had bought the hoop, because the squid was climbing up the pali, trying to get away from all that turmoil. And my grandfather was knocking the he'e down with that long stick and putting it in his bag. And then we saw the squid coming up towards the shore. And we ran and we tried to catch. We were having so much fun. And then when Grandpa's bag was full, he said, Lava, naf. But there was still plenty more squid coming up. We never like stop. Then Grandma said, We go, Helly. It's not there only for you. And we went up and we were up on top looking down. And we saw the Auku, the seabird, had come down and a seabird was hanging on to one leg of the squid, but the squid was under the rock. And we were laughing because the bird was pulling and pulling and the squid would not let go. And then all of a sudden, the whole leg came off. So we laughed and we thought, oh, that squid go get only seven legs. But at least he was safe. And then we saw the mongoose coming. And then we understood what Grandma said. 
where those things are not there just for mankind. They're all there for purpose. And we must respect those things. That's why our people have that Ohana system. They only take so much. And if they have plenty, they're going to pass it on to somebody else. It's never good to hapuku and waste. But now we have phases. So now they're getting hot time. Look for what they used to find so easy, even our opiti. But uh, all these things, your generation had to think about. Because it's in your folks' hands. How are you going to protect your island? Because we are an island people. Our ancestors are buried over here from the very beginning. Because none of us ever just happened. It had to be many generations of kupuna who cast their seed on fertile ground that you are all here today. Many times my grandmother said that to me. Don't get smart because you didn't just happen. So have respect of the things of your kupuna. And you know, with us asking questions, which you are doing now, lots of you want to know about your birthright, who you are, what are your heritage? Your heritage come from the canoe. Those first people that first came, we don't know for what reason, they decided to get on the big wa'a, the double canoe, and begin to leave the land they, they come from, whether it's Tahiti, Tonga, or wherever they came. That is your heritage, because everybody on that canoe were all of royal blood. That is your birthright. Nobody can take that away from you. They can take your money, they can imitate you, they can take all your land, but this they can never have as your birthright because you were born into it. And so you must be proud of that fact. You must be proud of your ancestry. But yours came as royal people because nobody, no maka'ainana could be on that canoe. So the king and maybe his half-brothers or cousins, they're all Ohana. They were the ones that came. And that is your heritage. And after they got here and through the generations, they were just one big family, one Ohana. Nobody was higher than the other until greed began to surface. And one with plenty of Ohana, look at the other one, oh, he has a better land, and then go and kill that one and possess his property too. And that's how we began to split. On Hawaii itself, we had about three alis, three kings. It was Kamehameha who brought all the islands together under one roof. And Kamehameha is from this island. So you folks cannot go home without thinking of Kamehameha. So, uh, no questions so far. So that is your birthright and something you must look forward to in your na'au, in your heart. I am somebody. My beginning was somebody, which is very important. Yeah, you folks all up on my nobody like <laughs> ask questions. You know, you can go up, you know, a certain time of the day you come and the way you uh, stand, you'd be surprised you see they have eyes. They have faces. It's the different way the sun sets, the shade. You can all go up and look. Now you can 
and, and the school was in the back, so all the kahunas lived behind. And this was a, regi a very religious place, because down in the valley, we have another hill that belongs to Lono. And that one is the one that the farmers take their first uh, harvest, they offer to Lono, or they pray for rain, so that they have a good harvest. Because all this area was only sweet potato, taro could not uh, grow here. And then there's a Mokumakai Trail, which they call the Lifeline. And every year, Ahupua had a Mokumakai Trail, and it's right down there. And they went up Mokka for water. There is water in the sea, but they always go up for water, fresh water. No question. Too good. That's the kind I like. <laughs> so you both can go up. Check around in the back. Nobody gets the the money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You sit around. Yes, yeah. 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 go in a center, it's easier to walk straight and in the middle. Take your time, there's no rush so you don't fall.
shadow us and learn they've had experience sailing out of the canoes and whatever but uh, the two that we'd like to recognize tonight one is um, Jasmine Kamanila
Okay. Uh, this is the bull mail up. Tell me. Roll it with smuggled. Roll it. Tell me. The bull tumor. The bull mail. Tell it to me. Okay. From a roll up to a fish smuggled. This side is rising. That side is city. Okay. Um, now we count the stars in the sky. Tell me up. Tell me if I'm. Tell me. Tell me Margaret. Tell me. 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 Tell the bull moon. The bull marker, the bull rule, the bull pay fun, the bull mail up. The bull payer, the bull alien, the bull serpent, the bull tomb. The bull misery, the bull, a chimney tow, or a wind. Machemias, Tanuk, Tan misery, Tai tumor, Tai serpent, Tan alien, Tan payer. This one is she. We count the stars. Around, right? Now we we make a room. A room means when we when we selling, we go to Burmaya. The front canoe is to Burmaya, and the back is then. Then we go to Burmaya. Burmaya is the front canoe, the back is the Burmaya. A room, tell me up, a room to pull me up. Tell the pay fun, a room to pull pay your, tell all, a room to pull in, tell my regard, a room to pull serve. Tell the moon, a room to pull to more, tell the good, a room to pull me sorry, tell the one, a room to pull, tell the man per fun, a room to pull me sorry. What do I look? I don't want to put over the fishing. To put a man in the perfume, I don't want to match my ass. To put over the aroma of the tallow. To put a good egg, I don't want to tell myself. To put a man, I don't want to tie to me. To put a bar regard, I don't want to tie a serpent. To put a wool, I don't want to tie a deal. To put a pay a fun, I don't want to tie a pay. Okay, I said, Do to Rasa Lapa. Uh, chat and sorry, we stay in the white drinking because I should make early tomorrow morning, then we go inside that chat. I don't like we go early, we're gonna stay outside. But I know where is the channel. But <laughs> <laughs> it's been ten first. Leave it. Ten times. Macaulay and Sieber. Maybe two o'clock or four o'clock. Now it's the people. The, People take over on the independence. Now it's ready. Uh, it's turn, turn it Don't turn to the water. <laughs> You're looking at the water inside the pot. <laughs> <laughs> this water is good. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's to be stopped. Talk to the guys. Sorry? Now it's almost time to leave. Yeah. Yeah.
Remember 